Hold on on tight tight for the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the the alternative alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this uh, Tuesday, August 22nd, 2017 day on our calendar. Got a lot to cover today, and I want to go back first to yesterday's show. And I did one on, uh, I've spent about the first 20 minutes talking about a video called I Pet Goat 2. I Pet Goat 2. And if you had a chance to go see it, I've put that on my website and it's kind of scary. It's kind of cryptic. And it's kind of, uh, why would they put it out now? Now, I remember when they did uh, Pet Goat 1. Now, that had to do with uh, 9-11, right, in 2001. And there were a lot of interesting predictions there and events that unfolded that that video kind of uh, told us. And it was also interesting that uh, that's what George Bush was reading Pet Goat to the school children when the uh, Trade Center was supposedly taken down by Arab terrorists. We knew they blew it up themselves. But now we got Petco 2, right be, and it came right before the eclipse yesterday. So during that show yesterday, I talked a lot about uh, interpretations. And one of my listeners sent in his interpretation and asked a simple question, was the Great American Eclipse of 2017 and the East Coast Tsunami or nuclear attack in Pet Goat 2. Now, I've had a chance to look at it several times, and it is amazing. And so what I decided to do was, well, first I said, well, where did it come from? So I listed the company that put this out. They're called Heliofont, and they don't tell you much about them. They're in Canada. And I wonder uh, what that group is really all about. If anybody has any information, let me know. Secondly, what I'm doing, if you go to my website, you will see that I'm running a iPetGo2 writing contest. And what I decided to do, since there are so many little things in that video, uh, there's one portion where the eyes of one of the one of the children well, I guess they're being tormented by Satan. It says market plunge across them uh, in, her, in, the, in the retina. So anyway, there's so much in there. I said, why not have a contest and solicit to my listeners the opportunity to look at the video, analyze it, then write up your interpretation. So I decided to do that. The great iPad Go 2 uh interpretation contest now here's how the details go everybody knows my email it's greg beacon at gmail.com okay now you can go get that video it's easy to find on, on google it's on my website tell your friends about it and here's what i want to do there's a 25 dollar uh entry fee now the winner is going to get an hour and the runner-up will get an hour radio show and we'll see if there's any financial remuneration depending on how much money I can raise on this. And the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to have to read all these. It's going to take me a lot of time. Then I'm going to pick the winner. So it's a $25 donation. You can get into the contest. Put on the donation when you go to my website at PayPal or if you choose to pay through a card. Or if you want to send me uh, money, I will give you an address so you can email me, but put on there entry fee for contest. Now, I am going to uh, run the contest and the deadline will be sometime in September. So get your, I want to see how this goes. And uh, if nobody sends it in, I guess there's no contest. So we have at least 30 days to uh, get this going. So tell your friends about it. The great IPECO 2 writing contest. Now you can read the details. They're very simple details on my website. And those details will say, uh, write 
look at the web look at iPad go to look at it as many times as you want write up a interpretation send it in to me at gregbeacon at gmail.com with uh, a $25 donation fee that you can do through my PayPal account on my donate button on my website at Greg Anthony's journal at wordpress.com okay Greg Anthony's journal at wordpress.com and you can then when you send in by email put an email uh, to me and uh, attach or I prefer if you put it in the body of the email because there's a lot of sinister people out there and they may want to join and then screw up my uh, internet with a bad attachment so I will screen the attachments but if you can put it in the body that's great if not I will have to do my best and uh, risk it I guess so I pet go to go back to my show yesterday there was one interpretation given by a listener and I should say his name it was um, let's see I finally got his name I didn't have it the other day I want to thank him for sending uh, well someone sent it said Greg you should feature this guy uh, William Frederick he's a Bible prophecy researcher so yeah there's a lot of stuff in there you know I think they they bring Jesus into it and I noticed on his forehead he had the, um, the pyramid <laughs> and his last scene he's worshiping the sun god I believe what these are all interpretations that I'd like to see from you we will pick a winner and you will be featured on my radio program and it's twenty five dollars donate to it's a good cause and also it'll take care of my time by having to read all, all of these and then decide so anyway I wanted to get that going so go to my website you'll find the details there the great iPad go to uh, interpretation writing contest okay so what else do I have for you today oh so so much uh, you know I was reading during the uh, during that eclipse I was reading what the Native Americans think about that and uh, it's interesting I'm gonna give you a little bit of what the Native Americans think about that think about an eclipse what how do they handle it and what you think about that that's primarily from the Navajo and then we'll talk a little bit about the military exercises that have started in North Korea now remember in um, the interpretation that the, uh, William Frederick did yesterday on iPad Go 2. He said, could there be a big 9-11 uh, 2017 event is the question he asked. And uh, that'll be up to you when you send in your writing uh, interpretations to me. But let's talk about what the Navajo Indians th think thought about how to handle an eclipse. Okay, so we're going to answer the question, why certain native tribes native american and south american and uh, native indians never watch solar or lunar eclipses for one they have been around for many centuries and well understand the ancient wisdom of all the native american tribes the navajo have been the most steadfast in disseminating the correct guidance for proper eclipse conduct now i don't know what you guys did yes yesterday I personally didn't even think about it. I, I, I you know, uh, the way it was presented in iPetco 2, it was like the beginning, the darkness, the uh, sun is not shining down on America, the sun god. And these crazy occult people are turning America into a dark wasteland. So I just ignored it and stayed in my little office because I was working on a lawsuit. But anyway. Uh, of all the Native American tribes, the Navajo seem to be the ones that have given us some correct guidance, at least from their point of view, on what to do on a, on an, when an eclipse uh, happens to come across your town. Now, the Navajo elders and chiefs have taught their children over many generations that an eclipse is a very sacred event that must be treated with great respect and reverence. Toward that end, they direct all members of the Navajo Nation to stay indoors during the actual eclipse of either the sun or the moon. 
They are strongly advised not to be outdoors during the celestial <laughs> drag. Get it out there, the celestial shows of light and shadows. The shamans of the Navajo Nation especially instruct their children not to watch the eclipse taking place or to look at any part of it. To disobey this crucial instruction can translate, they think, to physical health problems, as well as mental derangement and emotional imbalance. The Navajo Nation is not only the biggest Native American tribe in Arizona, it is also one of the largest in the USA. Their traditional body of wisdom is much respected by all other tribes. Their timeless teachings and cultural lore regarding eclipses even extends to pregnant women. If a pregnant woman sees an eclipse of any kind, be it a solar or lunar, it might affect the mind of the woman, or also in the future it will affect the health of the babies. And a special ceremony must be conducted to rid them of the influence, say the Navajo. I hope no pregnant women were actually out there outside watching it, according to the Navajo. Now, you may just scoff at that, but let's move on. The indigenous peoples of the Americas are well known for possessing knowledge that has been time tested and proven true. We, of course, as people who have taken these people and almost, uh, you know, our ancestors did. We're, I'm, not, we're not, I'm not responsible, or you're not responsible for what happened. But our ancestors decided to exterminate them. And so, in a sense, we don't really give them much credence anymore, do we? Uh, they have watched the forces of nature with a keen eye and conscious awareness. Hence, Western civilization would do well to listen sometimes to these esoteric insights about the great American eclipse. So what did you do yesterday? What, did you buy your glasses? Did you go outside and see if you could see it? Many throughout the East already share this same understanding about the sacredness of an eclipse. They also comprehend the uniquely powerful energies that are associated with a celestial event that sees the occultation of a major luminary. This coming Monday, well, it was last Monday, right? Yeah, just yesterday. Because I wasn't even paying attention to it, to be honest with you. Outside of talking about iPet Go 2. Uh, so Monday's eclipse had already tremendous effect on the United States of America, say some people. Look at what happened in Charlottesville, they say. Well, that was organized, but, you know, right before the eclipse. This extremely divisive clash, the right and the left, has served as a trigger point for more conflict in cities all across our country. The Navajo are quite aware that an eclipse can have a tremendous influence both before and after its occurrence. The seeds of chaos and substance, subsequent strife that were sown prior to Monday, August 21st, in Charlottesville will continue to sprout during the months following this eclipse. For these and other important reasons, it's highly recommended that folks resist the urge to watch. Did you resist the urge to watch? It's guaranteed to have considerable effects, say the Navajo, in all 50 states and beyond. Why should you not watch the solar eclipse if you did or you didn't? Why shouldn't you have, say the Navajo? It's quite possible that the age-old tech teachings in the Navajo could save the American people from a lot of adversity, perhaps. Hopefully the U.S. citizenry, oh, they didn't listen, not to the old Navajo Indians. They don't know anything. <laughs> but anyway, the question is, did you stay outside and did you watch it? And if not, okay. If so, I'm not saying anything will happen, but maybe you should uh, look up a Navajo shaman. Okay, so they have their uh, military exercises going on, and uh, that's the United States and South Korea. They do this every year. But North Korea, in their newspapers, has predicts a catastrophe this year. As massive U.S. war games begin Monday, they began on the 21st and will go for a month, 10,000 North Koreans have been admitted to the U.S., some say, fear many are military sleeper cells preparing to attack. My, what's going on? But... As we sit here today, of course, they're 
spreading this fear about a nuclear war risk. So let's look at what they're doing over there in South Korea, spending our tax money, playing these games. And I've got to tell you what, I was involved one time, and i got to tell you this story, and then we'll get to what they're doing in North Korea. But when I was a journalist uh, in Italy, I was sent on a story to Sardinia, beautiful island. And they have these little tiny horses there. They're miniature horses. And my love for horses, I enjoyed it because I got the chance to stay there three or four days after the uh, mission was over. And what I was involved in was uh, I was reporting on war games. And back then they were basically, I'll make it real short and simple, I was put on a destroyer or some kind of ship and I got to meet all the sold, you know, all the Navy guys and the Marines were there. And I ate dinner with them and talked to them. And uh, then they gave me all the military. I had to wear a helmet and everything. And I got to be, uh, I had my camera. And so what I was doing was reporting on these war games. And the, the thrust of the game was this. The American military was practicing an assault on an island, an attack. So we left in these little ships and that little boats, and then we attacked the island, and it was all, you know, set up. I mean, it started at dawn, and uh, boy, they were gung ho. They had their, they were smearing their faces with. I didn't have to do that. It was camouflage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And they were gung ho, boy. They, these sergeants, whip up uh, hatred. You know, it was as if it was a real war. I felt that inside of me. I really did. I felt it like it was a real war. And I asked one, I said, are you sure these are blanks? They said, don't worry, don't worry. And I said, yeah, yeah. I really, um, really trust the um, military sometimes. Yeah. But anyway, no one got hurt. Uh, well, I think somebody did break their leg or something because it is a pretty, I remember charging that, uh, I had to charge the beachfront with them. You know, and then there was these blank guns firing. It was kind of scary. I was hoping that none of them were real. And then I said, well, who's the enemy? And the Italian army was playing the enemy. Okay? So it was a kind of a two-day, three-day attack. So they attack, they dig in, and then they spend the day flanking and doing all these things that I didn't understand, but I got a chance to talk to them. And my first day I spent with the Americans. And the next day I had to go over and spend it with the Italian opposing forces. That was quite interesting. Now that first day it was sunny and everybody on the American side was like, this is, this is real war. They were serious. So night came and as the night came, I got a, they slept outside. I got a chance to go in and uh, get a couple hours shut eye in the barracks. And then they transferred me over to the Italian side because that was the, the plan to get both sides of the story. And so as I get over to the Italian side about, oh, I don't know, sun was coming up. It started raining. And apparently the Italians, they were back in their barracks sleeping. They weren't, they didn't sleep outside. Because they figured, you know, everybody's sleeping at night. There's not the Americans who are actively. They they built their little, I don't know what, you know, some slept in their their little hole. You know, they built a, what do you call that thing? Uh, anyway, they're sleeping outside. And so then they're sleeping outside. And uh, the, oh, we're off here. Okay, so, yeah, a little glitch in the... Uh, my sound system here. But anyway, so I switch over to the Italian side. So at five start, starts raining and I notice there's not that many guys there. You know, I'm going, wow, there's only a few guys here. What's going on? And the lieutenant said, oh my God, it's terrible. None of them want to come out of the barracks because it's raining. <laughs> and I started laughing. And so they slowly came out. Some of them were complaining that they didn't want to get their hair wet. This is true. And they're going, why do we have to play? Can't we cancel these war games? Let's wait for the sun to come. You know, what's the big deal? So the whole 
atmosphere on the Italian side was completely different. In fact, as the morning broke and there was no uh, gunfire yet, we had maybe a half hour, they broke out some wine and cheese. I'm going, wine? It's 6.30 in the morning? They had one little glass, right? So any, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you could see from the, the difference. Then the game started. And only half the guys were out. He was he only had like half his people. The other guys were like, we're not coming out in the rain. But the rain uh, subsided, luckily for the Americans, because the, I found out the, the, the head of the American side was mad at the Italian lieutenant. He said, you better get your troops out there, lieutenant. We spent a lot of money here, and we want to have a good fight a good battle and we need to have all of your people here and he says i'll do the best i can so he sent a runner and he forced these guys out they didn't want to come out in the rain well luckily the rain stopped for that american lieutenant and the war games continued so what happened was i spent the whole day with them and uh it was kind of fun they weren't serious at all they were laughing through the whole thing and uh the americans weren't though and they attacked and of course we lost uh, and uh, then the games were over. And so then I got a chance to spend some time in Sardinia, which was the, the most fun of all. And so I went to the little town there and got a little pensione, which is a little hotel room, and got the chance to uh, get a car and then travel around that beautiful island. And I ran across a farmer uh, who had these miniature horses, and they're very, very rare. And I found, I asked them, I said, where did, I'd never seen, they'd look like thoroughbreds, but as big as like a Great Dane. And it was the most incredible thing. And I had so much fun uh, that day. I remember uh, meeting him and then he invited me to lunch. And I told him, yeah, I was here as an American journalist. And the hospitality, by the way, in Italy was fantastic when I was there. I'm so sad to see Europe go down the tubes the way it is, but that's the plan and I might end the show, uh, or should I start the second half with what Putin has said about the Pope? I don't know if you've heard this yet, but he really lashed out against Pope Francis. And I think I'll wait to bring you back in the second half hour and start with that and then get to North Korea and this big, huge military war games going on. I hope I set the stage right. I don't think they're going to be afraid to go out in the rain, the South Koreans. I think this is more serious. Doesn't it sound like it's more serious? You know, you got that dictator on the north going, okay, if you guys start playing these games because you're provoking us, and then China's behind them, they, they think these are provocations. The Americans say, no, it's just offensive. But they got like 50,000 troops there now. So all it takes is one little mistake. One little plan mistake, one little match to set off the whole forest fire. And is is that what they're thinking about with the beginning of, you know, the eclipse happening? Now they got this period of time going, as we discussed the other day. Is something going to happen on 9-11-2017? Before that? During that time? A little bit after? Who knows? But things are... Folks, you got to admit, things are heating up all over the place. It's a very strange period that we have in our history. I look back 30 years ago, it was like heaven living in America or even living in Europe. None of this was around. Oh, we had a little bit of terrorism. Yes, yes, we did. They were planning their regional terrorism was there when I was in Rome. But it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same feeling as it is now because they're hitting you from every avenue possible. And uh, the propaganda is just out of this world. I mean, I, I sometimes think it's better not even to uh, listen to the Internet anymore. I really do. Uh, but everybody's so addicted to it, it's kind of hard not to. I mean, I, th I think she should one day say, that's it. I'm not going to listen anymore. See you later. But anyway, we'll be back, uh, as we can't do that, uh, back in three minutes on the Investigative Journal. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. 
corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn. The Jewish people are eager. Most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a third temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. The following, the following program, program is labeled dangerous, dangerous and off-limits limits by the, by the Supreme, Supreme Jesuit, Jesuit Command. command. But stand tall, people. people. Listen, listen up, 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 and you, you may, may just, just learn, learn something. something. Oh, dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, we're back in the second half hour. Go to my website at uh, greganthonysjournal.wordpress.com. Com and you can uh, press that donate button. We're a spot. We're a listener-sponsored station, so we need all the help we can get. So I appreciate it. Uh, press the donate button. Any any bit helps to keep this show on the air. I spend a lot of time, uh, a lot of years doing this, and like to keep it going, uh, at least until the uh, the end comes. Everybody, you know, if you go on the internet now, boy, a lot of sentiment. I don't know how many COINTEL people are putting these stories up, but everybody's talking about the end is nigh. Here we go. Then you get this uh, iPad Go 2 thing out there. And uh, boy, like I said, times have really changed in my lifetime and uh, not for the good. But anyway, I wanted to talk about, I don't know if you saw or heard this, but uh, I'm going to paraphrase. But I, uh, Putin had gave up 
Pope Francis a tongue lashing recently. And uh, he said a lot of things, and I tried to think about it because I said, you know, Putin's on the on the uh, New World Order team, but I guess he's his role now is to see what they're doing is they're depicting him, uh, Francis, as the Satan of the Vatican, and they're 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 playing this kind of good guy bad cop guy, you know. Here's the bad guy, and there's the good side of the Vatican. Who's going to win? It's all a bunch of games. A lot of the uh, uh, guys like Alex Jones, who years ago said, oh, the Vatican, they, they're old preachers, nothing. Greg, you're crazy for what he says. Don't listen to him. Now he says, well, the Vatican's been infiltrated by, you know, these evil people and Pope Francis. So, you know, they're uh, probably Putin's doing the same thing because he's on their team. And so is Alex Jones. So... Anyway, here's what he said. He said, Pope Francis is not a man of God. He's not a holy man. He should only, he's sticking his nose into everybody's business, pushing for a global world, telling uh, Europe that we, they must be united into one government, one type of, one type of currency, etc., one type of government, the same thing with America. And Putin is saying, you know, stick your... No, keep your nose out of uh, politics. And if you're a holy man, just talk about, you know, saving people. So he really lashed out at uh, Francis, calling him basically evil. And um, he's an evil man. He's not a holy man. And uh, I had to think about it. And I said, yeah, he's probably uh, playing that game. And uh, really on the side of the Pope, on the side of the New World Order, but making people believe that he is not a globalist. Okay, so there we go. So we got uh, the Americans starting their big war games with South Korea, just as, you know, this nuclear tension there has escalated. So it doesn't appear, to me, you can cancel these things. I mean, it's not like they're written in stone. They said, well, we had pl planned this long before uh, Korea's tensions have risen, you know. Well, cancel it. Don't raise tensions even higher because one mistake could lead to problems, right? But they want problems. <laughs> That's the difference. But anyway, uh, it's risky. And uh, Monday, U.S. and South Korea are scheduled and started to begin military exercises, a massive military show of force, which every time in the past has infuriated North Korea. Now, that's even before it's gotten to this point. So they really want to infuriate them. So something happens. Maybe this is the powder keg moment. They got a month of doing this. Anything could happen. Held every fall in South Korea. The Ochi Freedom Guardian War Games are the world's largest computerized command and control exercise. I don't know. Well, they waste so much money on this stuff. They, they create the wars. You know. Why you got to have, if, if you orchestrate them, what do you need war? Well, maybe they want to perfect what they really want, you know, have orchestrated or going to orchestrate. Some 30,000 U.S. soldiers and more than 50,000 South Korean troops usually take part, along with hundreds of thousands of first responders and civilians, some practicing for potential chemical weapons attacks. It's quite interesting, huh? Scheduled long before the recent diplomatic fallout between Washington and Pyongyang, Pyongyang, the U.S. and South Korean militaries will simulate warfare with North Korea from August 21st to 31st, well aware that North Korea could respond with another missile test. In light of these perceived provo you know, pr provocations by North Korea, which will almost certainly prompt some reaction, uh, a specialist on the Council of Foreign Relations, oh, you're going to trust these guys, Scott Snyder said, you know, over the course of the next two weeks, I expect tensions to escalate. This is always a sensitive issue, but it's more hair trigger as the North Koreans are very sensitive to likely uh, additional nuclear capable aircraft, aircraft flyovers. While the Pentagon has repeatedly stated the Biannual exercises are defensive, defensive in nature, okay? Both North Korea and, and China 
have long criticized them as provocation and an affront to regional security. There certainly will be some reaction, a Marine Colonel J.D. Williams said, and defense policy researcher at the RAND Corporation, these people are all connected. You know, he said he couldn't be surprised if North Korea conducted some kind of missile launch. Not a test, but a defiant demonstration of might. Wow. As discussed earlier, Korea's, uh, Kim, uh, uh, North Korea's Kim backed off of the threat to launch missiles at Guam, saying he'd watch the foolish and stupid conduct of Yankees before deciding on the launch. A decision that Trump tweeted was very wise and reasoned. Now, you got two real, really nutcases when you really think about it. Uh, now, why would I call Trump a nutcase? Well, because, first of all, he's a plant. And if he was for real, he would never be this kind of deceitful old fart. You know, he's got a lot of money. Go back and play golf and build some more buildings. But he's, you know, he's got this New World Order occultism deep in his uh, genes. And he's part of this whole thing, man. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Uh, so anyway, we got this going on. As discussed, uh, North Korea's Kim backed off this threat, okay, to, to go after Guam, saying he'd watch those foolish <laughs> Yankees. Now, while the exchange suggested that cooler heads were prevailing, cooler heads, these two guys, you know, you could light a cigarette if you put it on their head, you know, on both of them. Uh, in the latest U.S. standoff with North Korea, but next week's war games could rekindle hostilities. Well, no kidding. And that's what they want. Everybody in fear every day going to wake up. Did they fake it? Did they do this? Did they do that? Are we close to war? I just say get it over with. If you're going to do it, do it. On Thursday, North Korea's uh, state media declared that the military exercises will further drive the situation on the Korean Peninsula into catastrophe. So North Korea is saying that, right? Defense strategy and capabilities, conflicts and alliances around the globe are shifting constantly, enhancing the need for reliable and timely research and analysis. What a bunch of garbage is this? I'm reading this from one of their RAND websites, RAND Corporation. See, uh, they analyze a wide range of issues, defense strategies and capabilities. Why don't we get down to really where they're doing the an analyzing in that little tunnel between Georgetown and the White House. They're not analyzing how to prevent war. They're analyzing how are we going to kick it off? How are we going to orchestrate this one, guys? And then some big Jesuit mastermind will come and give his final orders. But it's not just North Korea, according to RAND and all these other corporations. Beijing will likely be rather unhappy, too. Why will they be unhappy? I think it's obvious. They're set up to be our foil, right? They're set up to be one of our enemies. The exercise, along with one in March, often triggers anti-war protests in South Korea and condemnation from China. While Chinese, the Chinese president uh, has been noticeably cool toward Kim Jong-un and has been critical of North Korea's development of nuclear weapons. China has long wanted the United States to shrink its military footprint in Asia, including some 12 bases in South Korea and Japan. In an editorial Monday, China's Global Times newspaper, an arm of the Communist Party's People's Daily, lambasted the decision by the United States and South Korea to go ahead with Monday's exercises. They said this, the drill will definitely provoke Pyongyang, uh, will provoke Pyongyang, uh, you know, North Korea more, and is expected to make a more radical response this time, the newspaper said. If South Korea really wants to know war on North Korea, on the Korean pen Peninsula, it should try to stop this military exercise. In other words, China, which is largely expected to rein in North Korea, is already hedging in case North Korea does something impulsive, suggesting the exercise itself could be the provocation that sets Kim off. And set him off, it will. In the past, North Korea has reacted strongly during the biannual war games. In 2014, the North fired off Scud missiles, 
during the march exercises held by the U.S. South Korean command called Foul Eagle. During the 2015 Freedom Guardian exercises, North Korea and South Korea exchanged artillery and rocket fire over the border. That exchange came after two South Korean soldiers were maimed stepping on landmines in the demilitarized zone. South Korea accused North Korean soldiers of sneaking across the border and planting the landmines. Now that's when tensions were lower. What do you think is going to happen now? Last week, China and Russia urged the United States to consider a freeze for freeze agreement to reduce tensions and such a, you know, I don't know. You know, they're not going to, they want to create this some kind of huge event. So maybe this is the one that will do it. Who knows? Or maybe they'll just keep you in fear. In such a deal, uh, North Korea would agree to suspend its tests of missiles and nuclear weapons, and Washington and Seoul would agree to suspend large-scale military exercises. Now, that's too sane. I mean, that's too uh, normal for them to do. That, however, is not happening. <laughs> Thank you. U.S. military experts say such a deal would give a lopsided advantage to North Korea, which could continue its military training even as the U.S. South Korean exercises were suspended. It's hard to imagine why the United States would accept that because of the vulnerability it would create, said uh, another RAND Corporation uh, member, Bruce Bennett. In a media briefing on Tuesday, U.S. State Department spokesman Heather Newark said the United States will continue to hold joint exercises with South Korea, and since North Korea will uh, immediately see this provocation as a green light for a response. Now, now, 10,000 North Koreans have been admitted to USA. Fears many are military sleeper cells. How do they get in? I thought that Trump had a uh, huge protection on the border. The U.S. has issued more than 10,000 visas to North Koreans in the past 20 years. Oh, okay. It's the Obama guys and the guys before him. 18 of them this year from March to June. That's well, not that many. It only takes one. An analysis of visa records shows this. And many of these people may be military sleeper cells sent to the U.S. to prepare internal attacks upon America if the two nations go to war. But <laughs> there's no record of whereabouts or activities in the United States of those who visit on business tourism, a group accounting for as many as half the North Korean visitors last year. State Department does not keep track of visa applicants' specific purposes for entering the U.S. A piece of information typically gathered through visa applications and interviews, a State Department official told VOA. There's no systematic way that, uh, that that's done, the official said, and it would be impossible to do because visas are often multi-entry, multiple entry. The official said all visa applicants are subject to the very strict scrutiny and standards and the U.S. issues visas to anyone who fulfills application requirements and is not determined to be a security threat. As the U.S. does not have official diplomatic relations with North Korea, the official said all visa applications for North Koreans are issued outside the country. So for this year, 18 North Koreans received visas from March to June. Interesting. Seven of them were business or tourist visas. The U.S. State Department Bureau of Consular Affairs only began publishing monthly visa statistics in April. The United States logo is pictured in front of the United Nations. <laughs> I'm looking at that. I say this because it's got the flat earth there. It's amazing. Uh, all right. So we got business and tourist visas. Going to North Koreans. Last year, the U.S. Initiated, uh, issued 100 visas to North Koreans. And as we know, there's, what, 10,000, they say, in, in here in the last 20 years. Okay, enough on North Korea. Okay, we got about two, nine minutes. And, uh, you know, I ran this story a while back, but I thought I'd bring it back because uh, people are asking me, is Trump a baby Christian, you know, a new Christian, or is he a... Uh, 
cut in the dry, satanic Freemason, you know, a, a full-blown satanic Freemason. Well, to answer that question, I don't think you have to go any farther than to look at his penthouse. And he gave a tour of that and to many people, and he exposes his love for Satan, for Apollo, in uh, this $100 million New York penthouse. Because, folks, all you got to do is look at what's on his ceilings, the statues. And no Christian would ever think about plastering their 66th floor. That's his penthouse floor. <laughs> Sweet with graven images of Apollo, Apollyon. Would they? Let's have a look at who exactly uh, Apollo is. A-P-P-O-L-Y-O-N, Apollyon. And it says it in the book of Revelations, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Right there in Revelation 9, 11. Man, is that where they picked my birthday for 9-11-2001? Uh, biblical definition, active uh, participle, uh, destroyer, G622, Strong's Concordance, Greek word, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the bottom line is, folks, people who profess to be Christian don't have what Trump has in his apartment. So I think we'll let his apartment tell us who he is, right? Now, uh, his penthouse suite has murals exalting Satan on the destroyer. I'll call him Apollo. I don't like that Apollyon. Uh, I, can, I guess I can say it. On their ceilings. Here are, you know, and here's some more. He's got a crystal chandelier, lights up its beauty as it's planted on the tableau ceiling above. It shows a scene of Greek or Roman gods and scenes likely to be Apollo again, who is often portrayed crossing the heavens in a chariot. Okay. The art of the deal maker, classical art dominates here with the bronze uh, of Eros and uh, Psyche, one of the great love Greek uh, love stories and Apollo led by Aurora, the Greek goddess of the dawn, suggesting Trump sees himself the mold of Apollo, Zeus's son, and one of the most powerful of the gods. But there is also family time with uh, on the far right of a portrait which shows his father Fred Trump and possibly his siblings. His father also features on the center, central table. While the choice of the book is expensive, is worth $15,000. If you think Donald Trump is a Christian, you're absolutely delusional. Uh, everything you need to know about Trump and the dark spirit of Apollo he idolizes is right there in his penthouse. So what more do you need to know? I mean, why would he do that? Unless he works for the dark side. And no one seems to be talking about that anymore. It's pretty simple to figure out, I guess, isn't it? Uh, you know, I did want to mention, I got about three or four minutes here, that uh, at the top of the hour, at the top of the show, I mentioned I have this uh, writing contest I'm going to start to interpret iPad Go 2. And uh, I think it would be quite interesting. There's a $25 entry fee. And you can send that uh, through my PayPal account on my website at Greg Anthony's uh, Journal at WordPress.com. That WordPress.com. So technically, you make one little error and you can't uh, navigate the internet. You're lost in space, in wilderness. But anyway, I thought it'd be interesting to do that uh, because there's so much. I watched that seven-minute clip, and boy, I'll tell you. A lot of little things get by me, and I think if we put a bunch of people, I'd like to get a lot of people to uh, to uh, contribute their two cents. And uh, I'm going to pick a winner, and then the winner will be uh, give. I'll be giving a, out a free hour radio show, and you can uh, talk about how you how you came to these conclusions and your ideas of what's going on in the world, and then. Uh, Maybe uh, from there, who knows? Uh, never know who listens sometimes. But anyway, I wanted to mention that about Trump because there are many Christians who believe that he is their savior or something, you know? 
And uh, although he came across and started talking about America first and everything, which is, which is, you know, I if you took him on face value and there was no hidden agenda or anything, you know, the guy says some pretty cool things. But when you understand who he really is and why they do it, how deceitful they are, it's kind of like the Pope. He says he's a man of God. He says he's the son of God. He says all these nice things. But, you know, these the Vatican is nothing but a house of crooks. And I know that because I worked there. I worked near there for a long time. And I saw it up close and personal. You see it when you live in Italy. You see it right there, right in front of your face. And it is amazing to me that they've gotten so... Uh, boy, the propaganda they spread. America was a country they had to get. And they got here early. Uh, and they were involved in creating our Constitution and swaying and controlling the minds of our founding fathers. These are stories that get so overlooked. But if we understood that in history, they never could get away with what they're doing today. And look what they've done over the years. I mean, this country was taken for a ride, you know, into the the most beautiful place in the world. Now they're bringing it down to be one of the, they're going to destroy it. And we just happen to be on the tail end of it here. Now, whether it happens in my lifetime, I can't be sure. But it surely will happen someday in, in the not too distant future. And it's really sad because it could be really a great place. I mean, it's a great, a lot of so many great people. And when you're not talking about these subjects of being deceived, uh, I wouldn't want to live any other place, to be honest with you, if it wasn't so, if it hasn't changed so much and it hasn't, and the people, you know, there's so many good people out there, but then there's so many people that are caught up in their propaganda that sometimes America becomes a very unrealistic place to live. I don't think many people have a definition between reality and what they present to you in Hollywood. And it gets all skewed up because everything is so digitalized and so Hollywoodized or how whatever you want to say uh, that I think people have a difficulty in distinguishing reality from really uh, fiction. And that makes life pretty difficult uh, for those who really understand what reality is. And many of those people listen to this show. So anyway, uh don't forget, uh, I Pet Goat 2 writing contest, join. Just, uh, you know, watch the video and then just send me what uh, you think it says, and uh, we'll have some fun with it. Okay, see you tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.